and welcome to the video lecture on self-joins. Uh, so, what is a self-join? Self-join is a join where both tables that are involved in join are the same table. In our database, for instance, if we look at a relationships window and we look at employee, employee has this column called employee supervisor. So, this is one of those uh, concepts we did when we were in IT 117, uh, where we have one entity that is actually taking uh, into account multiple entity information. So for instance, we could have uh, broken this down, remember uh, generalization? So we could have generalized uh, employees uh, into regular employees and supervisors, and then we could have had the super uh, entity that could have had the information that would have been associated with both. Hopefully that concept is somewhat familiar uh, since you've taken IT 117. In this case, and what typically happens is when we go from that relational model to a physical model, when we get to the physical model we're talking about efficient storage, so that generalized uh, entity would be combined into one one table as we see it here. So here we're looking at employee T. Uh, employee T uh, as an indicator or a column employee supervisor that indicates somebody has a supervisor or who that employee supervisor is. Let's take a look at the data. So if we look at uh, not employee skills, <laughs> if we look at the employee table, you'll notice that so far everybody's got a supervisor ID. Now, if you didn't have a supervisor ID, that would mean that you didn't have a supervisor. In this case, right now, everybody's got a supervisor. So you can see, for instance, if we look at uh, the supervisor ID for Phil Morris, it's 454-56768. That is associated with Robert Lewis. So do you, do you see that, that Robert Lewis is Phil Morris's supervisor? I hope you do, right, because here's Robert Lewis, there's his ID, so his employee ID is used in the supervisor ID column for Phil Morris. So that means that Robert Lewis is Phil Morris's supervisor. Robert Lewis, therefore, is also Lawrence Haley's supervisor. Robert Lewis is also the supervisor for Laura Ellenberg. All right? Robert Lewis has a supervisor. Robert Lewis's supervisor is Phil Morris. See, now that doesn't make any sense. I hate it when the, the author doesn't take care of stuff like that. Um, so let's do this. So who is, and then Lawrence Haley is Mary Smith's supervisor. So let's do this. I'm going to delete out the supervisor ID for Robert Lewis because he seems to be the boss of bosses. Um, so now we can see, if there's no supervisor ID in there, that Robert Lewis is the supervisor. The supervisor. Robert Lewis doesn't have a boss, so he's probably the owner of the place. Um, I suggest you make that change to the data in your database uh, so that some of this will make sense. Um, and we're going to use that for later queries, so that will make sense, even more sense then. So let's close the employee table. We get the idea. Let's go into our query. So our query is going to, uh, and I'm just going to follow exactly what the book has going on, is I'm going to select, um, and in this case it's going to be E dot employee ID. And I want you to do this. This is what's known as table aliasing. We, we so far are very familiar with column aliases. Now, since we've got multiple tables going on and we're writing all this SQLs, you can remember multi-table SQL um, was a bear to write. Uh, so in order to do a shortcut, so we don't have to type out employee T and watch me misspell Kasatmer a thousand times, uh, we can use aliases for tables now. Um, and you always could, it's just that now we're going to start using them. So we've got, um, we're selecting e.employee ID. Now, here's the interesting part. You need to know what your alias is going to be when you're writing your select statement. So keep that in mind. You know, you're saying, where did you get e from? Watch, you'll see in a second. 
uh, comma e dot employee name e uh, oh, m dot employee name comma oh as manager and then what we're going to do is in our from clause we're going to bring both tables into memory so we've got employee underscore t space e that is how you alias a table it's that simple you one space there's no as keyword this is not the same as what we just did with employee name as manager as manger as manager uh, this is aliasing a table, and when you alias a table, you simply leave a space and whatever alias you want. Very, very common for people to use a single letter. Uh, so, employee T, so the employee T table from now on will always be known as E. And that's why in the select clause, we did E.employee ID, E.employee name. Then we're going to do an inner join to employee T again but now we're going to alias that as M, okay? And that's where we get the employee name as manager. Now, this is the critical part. The on clause for this is very critical, right? So now we have to make sure, right, we're doing an inner join, which table is pulling the employee information and which table is in, uh, pulling the supervisor or the manager information. So we do E, dot employee supervisor equals m dot employee id very very important because if see here remember it's all part of the select clause so the select we want to show the employee id and the employee name so the employee is the one with the supervisor so in that case, again, going back to the employee table, I want to see the employee information, and then I want to see the supervisors. So if I want to show Phil Morris, and then I want to see a supervisor, the supervisor ID for Phil Morris has to match up with the manager's employee ID. See how that works? Right, so the employee T that's aliased as E is going to be the employee information, so that employee's, right, E, that employee's supervisor ID has to match the employee ID of, the super, of what's going to be used as the supervisor table, which in this case is aliased as M. So far so good? So when we run that, we see exactly what we thought we'd see. We see Phil Morris. Reports to Robert Lewis, Lawrence Haley reported to Robert Lewis, Laura Ellenberg reports to Robert Lewis, Mary Smith reports to Lawrence Haley. So Mary is on the bottom of the heap right now. Now, this is a good time to also change this to perhaps making this an outer join. Right? Why well, leave this as, as an inner join? We're missing all of our employees. We're not getting all of our employees. So let's do a left outer since we want to see all of our employees regardless of whether or not they have managers and there you go now we see that robert lewis does not have a manager or a supervisor depends on how you look at that okay so that is what's known as a self join uh we have multiple examples of that in this database uh some of the ones i had to do for the lab are somewhat concocted and contrived uh but they work so in this case, we did a self-join, and we also did an outer join. Um, and that concludes my video lecture on self-joins.